everyone. I just wanted to jump in here quickly before the decaf kombucha video starts and talk to you a little bit about decaf kombucha. So when I first started looking up about decaf kombucha and how it's made, no one had an answer. And it seemed like it just wasn't possible. You, you have to have the caffeine to brew the kombucha. And I have found out successfully over the last 10 months, you absolutely do not need caffeine. You can brew fully decaf kombucha without an issue. I'm sure many of you are wondering now, well, how do I get decaf liquid if I'm currently brewing regular kombucha and I have a SCOBY for that? So what I did is instead of growing my own decaf SCOBY from scratch, when I first decided I was gonna switch to decaf, was I brewed decaf tea, and I'll show you how to do that in this video, and then I added two cups of my regular caffeinated kombucha liquid, along with my SCOBY from a batch that was ready. And after two full brews of that, it became fully decaffeinated SCOBY liquid. In between, when I was trying to get to fully decaffeinated, the two batches I made that were decaf but had a regular SCOBY liquid, once they became completed, I just threw out the liquid. I kept two cups of the liquid I needed in order to brew a new batch, and I kept the SCOBY. And then I brewed a second batch. When that second batch was done, I did the exact same thing. I dumped all the liquid except two cups, and then I kept the SCOBY with that two cups of liquid and brewed another full batch. And by that time, it was all pretty much decaffeinated. Now I have also had success with growing my own fully decaffeinated SCOBY. And I will do a video of that in the future. As you know, if you've grown a SCOBY, it takes several weeks to grow. So it is a process that I'm currently working on now but I will show you how to grow a fully decaffeinated SCOBY from scratch. You will also notice in this video that the amount of decaf loose leaf black tea that I use is going to be more than the regular amount of caffeinated black tea that I used. And that's because the first couple of times I tried it, I did notice that the decaf tea was not strong enough. So I have moved it to nine teaspoons of decaf loose leaf tea, and it is the exact strength we need in order to brew a successful batch of decaf kombucha. I hope everyone finds this video useful and enjoyable, and if you have any questions, comment below in the video or send us a message on Instagram at Life is Trail Running. Take care, everyone. Peace. Hi everyone, I hope you're well. Today, I'm going to show you how to make decaffeinated kombucha. When I first was looking online for decaffeinated kombucha recipes, I couldn't find any. And when I did find people talking about it, it was that decaffeinated kombucha cannot work, that you have to have the caffeine to create the SCOBY and feed the SCOBY. However, I have found that you do not need caffeine. At this point, I've been making decaffeinated kombucha for about 10 months, and it turns out beautifully every single time, and I love it. So let's get started. If you haven't seen my first kombucha video from last year, I would recommend starting there as this one isn't going to cover the basics. We're going to begin with getting our filtered water and we're going to be boiling six cups of filtered water. If you have an electric tea kettle, the setting would be black tea boil, which is 212 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. Now we're going to begin to add our decaf tea. So when you use the decaf tea, as you can see here, I am using loose leaf and I will be using nine teaspoons level 
of decaf loose leaf black tea. Our water is boiled and now we're ready to add it to our tea. And just like with our last kombucha video, you will steep this tea for nine minutes. And now we're gonna sterilize our large glass jar along with our glass pitcher and the two utensils that we're going to use to stir the tea with just to make sure that we get rid of any possible bacteria that may be present. We're now going to add one cup of organic cane sugar to our glass pitcher. Once the nine minutes are up, we're gonna remove our tea leaves from our water. And then we're gonna add our hot tea to our glass pitcher, which contains the sugar. And my tea kettle doesn't get exactly four cups of the boiling water in the pot. So as you will see here, I will add the tea that I made and then I will take my tea kettle and pour in the remaining water to make this equal four cups. Now you're gonna thoroughly stir your tea until all the sugar is dissolved. Now allow your tea to sit cooling in the glass pitcher for 30 minutes as this will help the sugar dissolve. 30 minutes have passed, so we're now going to add our warm tea to our large glass pitcher. After we add the tea, we are going to add six cups of filtered room temperature water. We're now going to allow the tea to sit for about four hours until it's completely cooled to room temperature, as you do not want to add your SCOBY to warm liquid, as that will kill the bacteria. While I'm waiting for my batch of decaf kombucha to cool, I'm actually going to prep the flavorings for the batch currently that is ready to be processed. One of my favorite kombucha flavors is chamomile. And as you can see here, I have some dried chamomile flowers, which we picked from our garden this past year. And here I'm using a mortar and pestle to grind up those flowers a little bit, just so that they absorb easily into the kombucha when I'm flavoring it. For my second flavor, I am going to use ginger and honey. I always use fresh ginger instead of dried ginger for the fact that fresh ginger gives you all of those great anti-inflammatory properties where dried ginger doesn't always guarantee that effect. And with the fresh ginger, it has such a strong, delicious ginger taste, kind of like ginger beer. And a quick mention here, this cutting board that I'm using, my best friend's dad makes them, and I have several of them that have appeared in other videos. And if you're interested at all in any of his cutting boards or woodworking, you can follow the link in the description of this video. And the honey that I'm using is from a local farm about 10 miles away from us, and they have their own hives. This honey, is delicious and I love it in kombucha. And on a side note, these are all flavors that I use in the summer when I'm making sun tea, which hopefully this year I can show you how I do it. Now that our kombucha is completely cooled and room temperature, we are ready to actually brew a new batch of decaf kombucha. As I said in my last kombucha video, but this is just a friendly reminder, Please make sure that before you reach in and grab your SCOBY or touch anything in your kombucha jar, even if you put your hand in to pour the kombucha, please thoroughly wash your hands with hot soapy water and dry with a clean towel 
That way you won't risk contaminating your kombucha. And just like with regular kombucha, you're gonna add your SCOBY in to your new batch and you're gonna stir your ready-made batch and you're gonna add two cups of your existing ready-prepared kombucha and pour it in to your new batch. And then add a half a cup to one cup of filtered water on the top and then give it a gentle but good stir. Now wipe down your jar, your rim at the top and even on the inside a little bit, making sure you have no sticky tea residue. And then you're gonna put your cloth on with your rubber band and your string. You're gonna ferment this kombucha for 10 to 14 days, just depending on how you like the flavor of it. I usually do 10 to 12. Now we're ready to flavor our remaining kombucha batch if you have a batch already sitting. This one is decaf. Like I said, I've been making decaf now for about 10 months. And I'm just gonna take my fully prepped decaf kombucha and pour it into my sterilized bottles with my flavorings. And you're gonna wanna ferment these for one to two days, just depending on how strong you'd like the flavor but you can ferment them in the fridge or in the cabinet, whatever you prefer. We hoped you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful. I am going to be making, as I said, a fully decaf SCOBY video so that you could start a decaf SCOBY from scratch. That video will be coming in the next few months. Take care.